Yep, look, I changed. It's Lizzie and Jen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and we're almost like identical in height with how our computers are, or our cameras. Yeah. yeah. The glare like, off of our glasses. Uh -huh. We could be like sisters. <laughs> sisters. Sisters. Congratulations on the baby boy. <laughs> Even though I was team girl, but that's okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't change it. It's my husband's fault. <laughs> yeah. Hey, everyone. I'm so glad you made it over. I know it was such a long commute from the other live to this live, but thank you. Thank you for coming over. We are so excited. Lizzie, do you want to see what the prizes are for this week? Yes. Because I already filmed my video and I'm like, oh, wait, I haven't done the prizes. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Lucas, it's a bumblebee tray. And it's got a little lid. Look at that. So this is from so cool. Design. And he graciously has donated. And if you do not win it, it's up on his Etsy site. I put the link down in the description that this will hold your drills. And you got a little stopper. And then what I like about this tray, you have to be careful, but he put a little um, latch. So if you slide it in, the tray does not pop off easily. And look, it's a bumblebee. So like compare it to another tray. How big is that? This is a mini mm -hmm. Archer's Arts. I don't have like a regular white tray around because I don't use. Oh. Okay. So here, yeah. oops. <laughs> we have, yeah, so it's it's a little bit bigger. It's not huge though. Like it's manageable. Yeah. So yes. Yeah, so this is prize one. We have three prizes this week. Prize two. Look at this cute little guy. This is a wax holder. It's Aww. a little honey. Aww. House for little bees. So cute. So one for my channel. This is for my, these are for your channel too. And then the third prize is We Wax is graciously donated. I've not tried that. And some wax made out of beeswax. Do you guys see a theme here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's one for my channel and one for Lizzie's. Yay! Yay! And so there's one for each channel for this and one for each channel for this. So we'll be giving away those prizes a little bit later. I wanted to share that with you. It's so cute. It is. I, it is. I wish we could design something magnificent like that, but <laughs> I have the skills. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, well, you are currently working on this Spring Bee, lovely yes. collection. How adorable. And yes. I am currently working on Bee Buddies. How adorable. So cute. And tonight we want to bring in Eric Proctor, the wonderful artist who created these two bee fabulous um, paintings, but he also has some other amazing digital art. And so I want to bring him in. So we can celebrate his artistry and we can start talking and asking him questions. So chat, I'm going to be reading those questions and you let me know what you want us to ask, Eric. Hi, Eric. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? How are you doing? Very good. Very tired. Yeah. Yeah. So Eric has his own Twitch stream, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. I stream three times a week. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that and what you stream? Uh, so I, I just stream any artwork that I'm doing that's not currently under some crazy NDA. Um, but it's a <laughs> lot of like fun fantasy stuff. I do a lot of like cute work. Um, it's just the aesthetic that I really enjoy. How did you how did you get in? Because you have a very unique artistry. Like I've just been looking at, you know, a lot of your Treasure Studios art. And then I've been going on. I, I can never pronounce it. Is it Devi Art? Oh, Deviantar? Yeah, yeah Deviant. Forgive yeah. me. I've been going on and looking. And so 
Yeah. Tell us a little bit. How did you get involved in, in what you do? How do you do it? Is it digital? Is it do you draw mm-hmm. things? Like what what happens behind the scenes? <laughs> well, I I actually started as a traditional painter. Um, coming out of college, that's primarily where I trained. Um, however, as a poor college student, I actually could not afford a lot of paint. Uh, so I did the jump to digital, um, kind of taught myself how to do all of that um, and just started working in that medium. And uh, thankfully it was, a, it was good for me because most of the jobs around that time were all going to be digital. Mm-hmm. And so I, I became a conceptual illustrator. I work for a research laboratory, which you can imagine is a pretty cut and dry environment. So in order to escape that, I work on the stuff that you generally see in my gallery. So it's going to be the cuter, more fun stuff. I just kind of go wild with that stuff. But I, I, I do enjoy making a lot of fan art, a lot of like fun stuff. Um, but it, it's everything that you see is basically the stuff I'm having fun with. Oh, now, can you explain what conceptual art is? Um, so most of the conceptual artwork I do is going to be literally just concept art. The research that the lab that I work for, it's very theoretical. So they don't have a lot of visual to that. Mm. So researchers will come to me. They will say, here's what it is, what we think it might be. What do you think you can do to make that look like maybe 20 years from now? Um, so I draw a lot of future concepts. So oh, wow. a scientific example might be like, uh, we've never seen a black hole, but we want you to create <laughs> a black hole so we can have a picture in our book or on our website or in a video. Right. Essentially that. Um, a lot of it is just make this look like I can show someone else and they can get it right away. <laughs> It reminds me of those videos of like bear versus shark on like the discovery channels or whatnot. Cause you would never oh. have like a bear and a shark together. <laughs> right. I, I, that's a perfect example. It's um, scenarios that don't exist yet and they mm-hmm. need someone to make it look like it does. Yeah. Oh, we have a question from Valerie. Does Eric use a computerized sketch pad? If so, does he recommend a good basic starter one? I do, actually. Um, I have three. Um, I use a Wacom. It's W-A-C-O-M. That's the, it's like the go-to one for a lot of people, but they do tend to be pricey. If you already have, say, an iPad, um, you can easily pick up an Apple Pencil. And there are many programs you can buy on the iPad that, our, our great starter program for drawing on a screen. Our next question is, I what type of fan art do you do, Eric? Oh, I'm all <laughs> over the place. <laughs> um, I love to celebrate culture as it's happening. Um, so any movies that are coming out, I, I'm going to do that. But most of the fan art that I do is going to either be Pokemon or Disney. Mm-hmm. Have you ever done a Doctor Who fan art? Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I need to look that up because I want, I, I'm trying to get Rachel to do more uh, Doctor Who inspired diamond pieces. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm a total Whovian. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, oh, well, uh, Crashly wants to know, do you do your artwork on Twitch? We were just talking about this before we went live. Yeah, I absolutely do it on Twitch. I also have a YouTube channel, which I don't update as frequently. So if you would like to see it live, Twitch is the place to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So where where do you get your inspiration? I've seen a lot of Pokemon mm-hmm. um, out there. Like, do you start with a base or do you like create from scratch? Like, how do you come up with fan art in general? Um, generally speaking, I, I'll get a random idea. Um, and then I'll either sketch it out in a sketchbook so I can come back to it later. Mm-hmm. But everything starts from scratch. I, I'll i realize an idea. And a lot of times I try to do that in front of other people live on Twitch so that it can help foster other people and their own development. I try to be as transparent about my method as possible so that mm-hmm. it helps educate other artists and other people who would like to get started with that. I, I'm just amazed because I was sitting there looking at some of the artwork that Treasure Studios has licensed through you. And I'm like, that looks identical to Pokemon. Like, <laughs> I was like, are you sure you didn't cut and paste? 
Um, and I see the little nuances that were different, mm -hmm. but I was like, this gentleman is amazing. Yeah, the um, the tendency to be, as we would say, on model um, is there because uh, people can be very defensive about the way something looks if they're a fan of it as well if it's just slightly off as far as the details are concerned some people can be pretty offended <laughs> well in pokemon is a very very um specific fan base <laughs> yes <laughs> it is and while i say that a lot of fan art does give the artist room to interpret um mm -hmm. but the closer you get to on model the closer that people probably want to see it yeah well, I know you just did Twitch, but do you have any, I'm putting you on the spot. I didn't ask you to prepare, so you can say no, but okay. do you have anything you could show us? Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Aside from the work in my gallery, um, uh, I don't know that I have anything I can pull up immediately. Um, I did just do, I on my Twitch channel, I actually reward my subscribers. Um, they can request a free drawing from me once a month and I will do those traditionally for them. So I'll send them to them. So uh, it's generally people who will pick like their own character. So this one is one I did on Wednesday. Um, this one I did last month. So it's just these uh, small sketches that I do. And that's probably the most recent thing I can think of oh, that I can I just that. quickly grab. <laughs> Thank you for showing us. Yeah, no problem. Okay. So I see a little uh, four legged creature in the back. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Is there so, one or two? There are two. Um, <laughs> if I don't have that box there, there would be a problem. They, <laughs> <laughs> they're there all the time. Um, I actually have five cats. Well, our, our friend Crashly, <laughs> I think we lost count after 11. So, Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we're a good cat community. So <laughs> how, tell us a little bit about your cats. So, um, one of the cats, actually, I think it's, yeah, this one here, um, he's actually a big inspiration for a lot of my artwork. Uh, his name is Grendel. There's actually a small figure of him right here. Ooh. That's actually a, a plush doll of him. Uh, he makes his way into my artwork a lot, either the, based on the way he looks or his personality. I, I do really love cats a lot and their behavior is a big inspiration for the mischievous side of my artwork. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I, I'm so highly allergic to cats, so I can't, oh, no. <laughs> run, but I do like cats. It's, it's just, yeah. Mm. All right. I, I think they're the only thing I am not allergic to. <laughs> there you go. Have you ever cartoonized a live action character with your fan art? Um, I have done fan art of live, live action characters. Um, they, I tend to, Whenever I do them, I treat them more like a portrait. So mm -hmm. let think less cartoony, more realistic. Um, but I, I I want to do that more often just because I want to start moving into more portraits. Mm -hmm. Lizzie, do you have any questions for Eric? Um, yeah, like when you go on Twitch, do you ever do one where you start from scratch and the people watching you help you draw while you're on oh, Twitch? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Every once in a while, I will do one of two things. Either I'll start and we do kind of like a let's paint style thing. I encourage people to follow along with me. I try to slow down my process or simplify it. Or I may jump start it. I might give them the draft and then we all paint it together. And uh, I give them a week to complete it. Um, and I love seeing the end result of that just because everyone has their own interpretation of where we started. It's kind of like telephone. We start one place, everyone has a separate example at the end. It's one of my favorite things to do with a community of artists. Hmm. I love wow. that. Lizzie, maybe he can turn us into fan art. <laughs> <laughs> a girl can dream. <laughs> as long as it makes me like really thin. Like a, one of those caricatures, <laughs> so we have like the big face, but like we're <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Valerie wants to know what is your favorite Pokemon character? Oh gosh, so I actually really like Sylveon, which is a fairy type Pokemon. Um, 
I you can't see it, but there's quite a bit of Sylveon merch that I have up in the top shelf here. I I like this Pokemon for a very specific reason that most people think is weird, but it has these ribbons and bows all over it that are actually part of its body, and I think that's really fun. <laughs> Well, speaking of part of your body, one person wants to know, have you always had that amazing white hair? <laughs> uh, not always. Um, I started bleaching my hair, uh, I think around the time that I started streaming or a little after, and I got very used to it. And now when I see photos of myself with black hair, it's weird. <laughs> but at this point, I, I just keep it this way. Well, I'm glad yours turned beautiful white because my husband tried to bleach his hair in college and it turned out orange. Oh, oh, so, yeah. So I, <laughs> I don't trust myself him, to do it. <laughs> he has or he had orange hair. <laughs> I, I once tried to do it myself and I had the same result. Well, that's good to know. It's not just <laughs> Lizzie, do you have any other questions that you've seen? Uh, well, someone's asking, what's your name on Twitch? Oh, uh, it's uh, Saoshin. So T S A O S H I N. Well, thank you for pronouncing that because I slaughtered it. <laughs> That's okay. Everyone does. Where, where did the name come from? Oh, uh, my gosh. I wish I had a better story for my name because I've had it for so long, but I don't. It, it's literally a teenager version of myself thought it sounded cool. And it's just stuck since then. You could make up a good story. I, I guess I could. <laughs> I could make a narrative up for your it. Name, you know. <laughs> I I broke my foot in 2012 falling in a shower, but I I wish I was in Thailand at the time, and so I was like, well, maybe an elephant stepped on it. Maybe someone robbed me. And I <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, I I like those. I that's a good idea. I probably should come up with something that's more grand. <laughs> Well, you know, honesty is great too. So, all right. Green ABs wants to know who is your favorite artist and what is your artistic inspiration? Oh, oh, wow. Um, it's actually kind of hard to answer this question because I've kind of grown up artistically in a community of artists. And so generally the inspiration comes from observing my peers. Uh, but if I had to point to anyone else that I could think of, that I know that maybe other people might know of is maybe Borgero. Some of the romantic impressionist painters are some of my favorite. Uh, the aesthetic of like cherubs and, and very light and very like gorgeous colors are some of my favorites. As far as maybe pop artists are concerned, I, I really actually like Andy Warhol's work. I really, really enjoy Chris Sanders, who was the Disney artist who made Lilo and Stitch mm -hmm. and How to Train Your Dragon. I noticed that in some of your artwork. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Crashly wants to know what made you realize your fabulous artistic ability and how has your art style grown since you first started? Oh, <laughs> so I, I think as a kid, uh, the art bug got in pretty early on and this was not something my mom enjoyed about uh, my youth. Uh, she really wanted me to be a doctor. I was just going to say, did she want you to be done? <laughs> <laughs> she, she, I, I have a classic Korean mom. She wanted me to be a doctor, play violin, uh, you know, get married as soon as I get out of college. I did none of those things except for play violin. Oh. Uh, I got to college pre-med and halfway through, I changed my major to art. I just, I, it wasn't something I could escape. Art was something that was always going to be something, a reality for me, whether it was a hobby or whether it was my career. And making that change was scary. Um, it, it's always tough to change your major halfway through school and with a mom who did not want you to do that. <laughs> but I would say that a lot of the inspiration of being there is just the resistance to doing it. And fan art, actually, the reason I do it is because that's the reason I started. I would watch media and I would love what I see and I would make fan art as a kid growing up with Disney VHS tapes, I would pause the tape and draw the scene. And I'd be like, mm -hmm. I love it. I love this scene. And I, I want to look at it forever. And so even as an adult, I still think I do fan art because that was such a big part of being a kid resisting my mom wa wanting me to draw, basically drawing in secret. And, you know, now I get to fully do that and embrace it. And it is my whole life now. And I couldn't be happier. 
Has your mom settled in now? <laughs> yeah, I, I think now that she sees that I'm successful with it. Um, as it, long as you're <laughs> successful, right? As long as, as long as they're success. And I shall always say, as long as you're happy doing what you're doing, then I love it. But I know that she wants me to be successful. She wants me mm -hmm. to make sure that I'm doing what I can do that I love, but also be able to make a living on that. Well, I was I was the complete opposite. I went into graphic design in college and uh, went to an art class and realized I couldn't draw. <laughs> so um, after two and a half years, one semester away from my degree, I switched to psychology. So <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> I'm like I can't draw. So you're the opposite. You're like wow, I yeah, can't completely draw. opposite. <laughs> I'm like, this isn't fun. I have no idea. Where's the nose go? Like, what? <laughs> like what's going on? Here? That's awesome. <laughs> okay. Well, Cheryl wants to know, when you did painting, what type of paints? Oils, acrylics, gel pens? Oh, I was oil. Oil all the way. Um, in fact, when I was younger, I thought acrylics were going to be the thing that I pursued. But um, in my formal training, oils is what we used. And mm -hmm. at this point, I actually have a trouble with acrylics just because they dry so quickly. But um, at this point, oils now intimidate me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, it's been a while since I've actually been up back on a canvas with oil. It, it's just I'm so used to digital painting at this point that I really need the undo option, which does not happen <laughs> on a canvas. <laughs> Where's the undo on the canvas? Exactly. Right? <laughs> the I've got the paint. muscle memory looking for it too. The white paint. <laughs> <laughs> That's the undo. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Lizzie, how about you? Got any more there? I don't know. Everybody's answering questions pretty good. Is it, is it hard to do digital art? Like, I feel like it'd be hard. It can be. Like, um, is it like I, is it like drawing on a piece of paper or is it more complex? It really depends it on your tools. I think if, if you're trying to do it with a mouse, it's going to be fantastically difficult. Uh, a drawing tablet is always going to make that easier. Um, I, I do think that it is its own method. A lot of traditional people think that once they jump over, it will translate almost immediately. It does not. It's its own skill. That said, drawing traditionally and digitally now each has its own benefit and its own negative i i so sometimes i'll draft traditionally then move over to digital sometimes i draft digitally then move to traditional like i said it, it just depends on how you want to use both i i spoke with um another artist about a year ago and um asked how the transition, like if you draw something on paper and then you need to put it onto a digital. Mm -hmm. and, and she mentioned, I guess there's a, I don't want to call it an app, but like a software program out there that helps you do that. So then you can have the undo buttons. And mm -hmm. <laughs> do you use something like that? I, I'm very lazy. I just take a photo <laughs> with my phone <laughs> and then I just send it to my computer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the, the laziest. Um, I, if it's a draft, it's like usually um, just something very generalized, a sketch, and then I'll take a photo, move it over to my computer, and then do the real line art digitally. If it's a finished traditional piece that someone wants digital, I just scan it. Mm -hmm. uh, do you ever find yourself like doodling or drawing and you're like, oh, wow, I didn't even realize I was doing that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like it kind of like when you're driving and you just kind of mm -hmm. mind just drifts mm -hmm. away. Yeah, absolutely. I sometimes think that the most organic, most real artwork can come about that way, especially when you get in a zone. I don't know if you ever saw the movie Soul, but when he kind of mm -hmm. just loses himself to the moment, there are times when I think I go into a Zen moment when I'm painting. Uh, especially if I'm working on an environment because I just completely get lost in the idea of the details. Um, Bob Ross is someone I think is a perfect personification of this idea. Like he can completely lose himself in the detail work. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. I, I grew up watching Bob Ross and I thought it was look so this cool. Tree. Look how yeah. easy you can do it. And I'd look yeah. at mine and be like, what are you talking about? 
<laughs> it looks, <laughs> it looks I love like that he can weave <laughs> entire narratives into his into the smallest details of his work that, that exist for him in his mind that he says out loud and you get to to join him on that journey and I think that's so cool so Cheryl wants a further update on your mediums paints type of pencils watercolors etc um I think Dr. Martin's for watercolor is probably the best. It's um, a water-based, it sounds funny, but a water-based watercolor that has the highest degree of saturation. That's always been my difficulty with uh, working with solid watercolors is as soon as you add water, they start to thin out. Mm. Uh, so that's been my favorite for watercolor. As far as paint is concerned, um, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I generally grab what's cheapest at Michael's. <laughs> Unless someone's commissioned me and they want their paint to not yellow, then I'll, I'll go for Grumbach or something a little higher. I miss the 40% off coupons. Uh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> when, since when did I always need to have like an email or a coupon for, <laughs> for all of this? <laughs> all right. Green ABs wants to know who is your favorite Doctor Who? David Tennant. <laughs> My favorite. All right, so what, what what inspired you to do these two paintings, Bee Buddy and uh, Spring Bee? Uh, I am actually a beekeeper, and <gasps> I love bees. <laughs> well, yes. I'm allergic to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw the uh, the prizes earlier. They're super cute. <laughs> so you can make your own wax too. This is I can. Like bee wax. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've been keeping bees for probably eight years now. So what inspired you to keep bees? I think they're really neat. Um, I actually don't like honey. <laughs> I uh, Every bit of honey that I take from my colony, I give to my neighbors so that they don't make me get rid of them. Uh, nice. I also give them to friends and family. But I actually think that beekeeping is just a really fascinating side hobby. Bees are really interesting to watch um that you, the more i i work with them the more i learn about them and i i just think they're super cool well i can always send you my address you know I love <laughs> <laughs> well, rachel has a question what is your favorite digital tools that you use procreate ipad etc so my favorite is going to be uh photoshop i've been using photoshop since i started digital and most of the work that you're going to see that I've made is going to be on a Cintiq. It's a tablet that's made by Wacom. But I also really, really like Procreate on the iPad. I think it's a fantastic program that does not cost a lot. And it's a far less cheap than buying a whole Cintiq. And so if you're just getting started, <laughs> that's where I would recommend you start. Well, Life with Lindsay has a little comment. She says her dad used to tape his episodes on VHS, Bob Ross, mm -hmm. and paint his happy trees in our playroom. That's amazing. That's awesome. That's yeah. really cool. Oh, Cindy Lee wants to know, when are you bringing us more diamond paintings? Oh. <laughs> Have you sent any more to Rachel? <laughs> yeah, I mean, whenever, um, I guess when I build new pieces or anything that looks good for a diamond painting. I'm, I'm more than willing to, to release them. <laughs> yes. We love, we love continuous art. <laughs> <laughs> Keep, yeah. We're, we're addicts. We're, we really are. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever watched B movie? Oh, okay. So <laughs> I haven't. Um, and it's because I know too much about bees. I think it would just be, <laughs> be very annoying for me. <laughs> but people like to quote that movie to me a lot. I'm sure they're like, oh, I know something about bees. And then they That's try to I relate hear. and you're like, oh, my gosh, stop it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Oh, dear. Cheryl is asking a personal question. Feel free to say never mind. Okay. But how young are you? Oh, I actually never reveal my age. I think it's funnier for people go. to just guess. <laughs> the therapist I, in me says, you don't have to answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm anywhere between 20 and 80. You can pick. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I always say I'm turning 29, right? It's like it's like that. Exactly. Um, I actually do that on purpose just because a lot of younger artists who look up to someone they find is more established, 
think that based on that person's age, they need to be at a certain benchmark. And I don't like that. So I generally just, if you think I'm 20, I'm 20. If you think I'm 80, I'm 80. What would you say is like your soul age compared to like your artistry? Because some people are like young art. (laughs) And you were saying before, like some of the older artists are where you get your inspiration. So. Right. Yeah. Um, I think if I asked the people who followed me how young I behave or how old I behave rather, they'd probably say that I'm like 15. (laughs) I'm pretty immature. (laughs) Um, I think for, if I were to like evaluate my own age, I'm, I'm probably 30. I'd still stick with 29. 29 is good. I like that. (laughs) I'll steal that. He was born somewhere in the (laughs) nineties. Yeah. All right. Everyone's congratulating you on the bees because they're in jeopardy. Yeah. And they they love the fact you're helping our ecosystem. Diamonds Around You does love your cat in the back. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Yes. I'm glad he's being calm because he normally is not. It's my soothing (laughs) voice. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. All right. Oh, somebody says, do you like jazz? (laughs) You know, for the sake of the bee movie and just liking bees in general, maybe I do like jazz. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Is there anything you want to share with the audience? Any, um, like your Twitch times? We have been putting um, the links in for you if anybody wants to catch you. Um, We know Fridays, but do you Mm. want to give us the days and the times in case people want to check it out? Yeah, I stream Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time. Wonderful. Yeah. So he stops in time. You can hit him up and then you can swing over and see me. So exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just send everyone your way. Yeah. There you go. What, what do they call that? Raids? Yeah. A raid. Raid over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to learn the Twitch logo. <laughs> there <you go. laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> I've been doing it for five years now and I still feel like a newbie. Oh, green ABs wants to know what breed of cats do you have? Oh, um, so we have uh, Grendel, who's a Highland Lynx. Um, they, I don't know how to really explain what that is. Except he kind of looks like a Maine Coon, except he has round ears, a very short tail, and and like twenty six toes. He's got so much polydactylism. <laughs> um, then Ghost, who's next to him, is um, a, a black cat. We also have a tuxedo cat, a muted calico, and a savanna cat. Do they all have different types of personalities or? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the three boys get along. Our, our two ladies have a tendency to not like them. And uh, they claim their own territories. So <laughs> they all have their own unique personality. And I, I that's one of the things I love about cats is that they can express so much and also be a little mysterious. And that's one of the reasons I like to use them as a reference point in my artwork. Mm-hmm. Yeah, our cats do not get along. Oh, no. I have a male and female, and uh, the female does not like the male at all. Yeah, yeah, the, the boys, they can they can be a little on the roughhouse side, and our, our ladies yeah. don't like that. <laughs> you know, with animals, I'm always, like, apprehensive of what kind of animal are you going to get? Like, if you if you're getting a kitten or an animal that hasn't revealed its personality yet, it's mm-hmm. like, am I going to get this uh, dog or cat from, you know, Hades or am I going to get this <laughs> or am I going to get a mischievous, mischievous one? Like, it's just, you never know. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, uh, it's always a mixed bag, but I, I love every personality. It's just, I, I, co- I completely understand that as a kitten, they might be one way, but as an adult, they may shift. But with every cat, like our Savannah cat can be ornery, um, but I love that about her. You know, it, it just a type of personality. You have to respect certain boundaries. And, you know, once you learn the way they want to love, then you get the love that, you know, you can give them. Mm-hmm. I teach a lot about love languages, right? Even as mm-hmm. humans, we have love languages. And so, you know, people need to be loved in a certain way. And it's once you find how they want to be loved, it's like you've unboxed this yeah. 
amazing yeah. way to connect. Yeah, it's such a reward. It really is. So Rachel is enticing us, saying, going to your deviant art site, <laughs> letting her <laughs> <laughs> yeah a, a, anything um there's some in there that there are commissions and the client would probably respectfully want to keep it private but uh, anything else is up for grabs um baby cakes wants to know have you ever wanted to work for disney oh that's a that's a good question when i was younger yes absolutely i i actually begged my mom to change her mind about artwork and um, potentially I would try to go to California art Institute, which is kind of a fast track to working mm -hmm. for Disney. Um, and I, it's funny, I was accepted. Um, I, I just couldn't afford going there because I was out of state. Mm. So it, it was one of those unfortunate circumstances where I'm not really sure how that would have changed my life. But now uh, like people, I get this question now and where I am now, no, I, I would prefer to not work for Disney um, just because it is grinding. Knowing what I know now versus like the idealized idea of working for Disney as a kid, I, I definitely know the difference at this point. So I'm very happy with what I'm doing now. Um, contractually, I have worked for them before, mm -hmm. but it's freelance work and it's a lot easier than working and more embedded in their industry. Well, I can imagine too, you have more of a freedom, right? Yes. In yeah. working with Disney. Um, just to relate, I remember like the runner up on American Idol was glad he didn't win because he would have been locked into all these uh, different contracts. And so he ended up being able to get his own contracts and actually made it bigger than the winner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, Life with Lindsay wants to know if you could do a totally different art medium. What would it be? For instance, her mother and sister are both artists and mosaic and stone sculptor. Oh, that's a cool question. I actually have thought about that before. I I think I probably would have ended up doing My daughter. more. She's saying thrown... hey. <laughs> I probably would have done more wheel thrown ceramics. Um, mm. Pottery was a, a pretty big part of my early formal training. I, it's we had to do both two dimensional and three dimensional work, and so I I did a lot of wheel thrown stuff. I really, really enjoy it. I just, again, coming out of school, I don't know where you find room for a kiln and a wheel and <laughs> a green room and all this other stuff that you would need for it. But it would be really fun to pursue that again. Well, Lizzie's trying her artwork and uh, what, what's your new endeavor, Lizzie? Uh, 3D printing. <laughs> oh, cool. Do you want to show, you need to show your penguins. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh my God, it's cute. I'm going to make you larger here, Lizzie, so you can, there's our little, over here, other way, other way. Oh, there you go. Oh, those are so <laughs> cute. <laughs> and very it's durable. Very, <laughs> like 20 of them. They look like an army. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is a frog. I like that color. And thing. then this was supposed to be a sloth, but when I was cleaning him up, I kind of cut his fingers off. So <laughs> those are very big now for 3D prints. That's what you hear in the background. There's a turtle being made. She's making a Everybody's turtle. Everybody's going to have an army of animals soon. <laughs> that's all I seem to be able to do for animals. So yeah, that's really animals. neat. Green ABs would like to know, and you can tell them how to contact you um, for commissions. She wants to know about commissions. Uh, you can always email me at the same name at gmail.com, or you can uh, send me a DM on any of my social networks. Uh, I, I really, it's hard for me to price commissions without knowing what you need. Right. Um, but they, they start around 500. All right. So one more question. And then I, I have a little activity for us to do as we close out the night. Oh Cheryl goodness. wants to know, what do you think of your artwork as diamond paintings? I think it's really neat. I think it's really cool. Uh, when I was a kid, I remember uh, really enjoying the paint by number sets that you could mm -hmm. buy. And um, this reminds me a lot of that, but a way cooler. <laughs> and I, I think the pieces work really well as diamond paintings. 
All right. So I've done this with most of the artists that I've talked to. I don't know if you have paper and pen around, Eric. Oh, you know, as an artist, I probably should. <laughs> Lizzie, I don't know if you want to grab paper and pen. So what I like to do is we're going to pick something to draw, all of us. And we're going to give ourselves like only a minute to draw it. Okay. And then I'll, we're all going to show it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Should we get like, should I do it in a pen? You do it whatever you want, Lizzie. So, chat, what would you like us to draw? Some have been like dragons or gnomes or. Um, trees or flowers, owls, and, clouds. and this in only a minute. Yeah, that's yeah. the fun part. Okay, <laughs> it's to you have to put your artistry and ambitious thoughts away and just let your mind go. All right, all right. Well, I that's not fair. He knows how to draw bees. <laughs> 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 You should see my, normally, if we had more time, Eric, we've done this before where we've had one minute, like, no, it was like 90 seconds, one minute and 30 seconds. And it was the same thing. And then you laughed as, as you saw how oh, much yeah. worse. <laughs> <laughs> we've uh, run a challenge like this in my community where it's 10 minutes, okay. one minute, 10 seconds. Oh, wow. So, yeah. okay. <laughs> All right. So, Eric, I'm going to let you pick. Some of the choices are ninja turtles, butterfly, frog, birds, koala, platypus, a happy little tree. Um, do you want to try the hardest one? I think ninja turtle is going to be the hardest one. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> Let's In a minute. Go. Let's go for it. All right, so I'm going to set the timer on my lovely phone. Let me get to the timer. And this is how we're going to end our night, guys. How fun is this? All right, oh so goodness. this is going to be disaster. All right, so we're going <laughs> to have one minute to draw a Ninja Turtle. Okay. All right, on your mark, get set, go. Oh, my pen is dry. What a great start. <laughs> Yay, I might actually win. <laughs> I know I'm not. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Just remember, I never took art. <laughs> remember, I dropped out of art. <laughs> I don't know. What the heck do they look like? Turtles in a half shell. Turtle power. <laughs> well, maybe oh you need the shell on the front. I don't think I could possibly make this any better. <laughs> okay, time <laughs> up. All right. <laughs> All right, so stop, 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 okay. All right, who wants, Lizzie, do you wanna go first or do you want me to go first? Oh my gosh, I don't care. <laughs> hey. Okay, I'm gonna make you, there you go. Wow, <laughs> you're so clever. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> oh All right. Oh, you <laughs> pizza. Oh, is this like Michelangelo or something with the pizza? <laughs> <laughs> That's like his shell. Can't really tell it's a shell. Oh, I can. I can tell it's a shell. <laughs> I don't know why he has fingers and no toes, but you know. All right. Uh. Okay. Oh my gosh! Oh, he oh, he so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have the time for the hands or the feet. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> yeah, um, thank I you. I have a question. 
Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to sign that and donate it as a prize tonight? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen in chat, we are going to start with giving away Eric's uh, lovely turtle power. He he said he will sign it. and I'll sign, um, it. I'll sign it now. We will send it out. Okay. So... How let's let's see how do we want to do this? All right. So what we will do is we will pick a number between one and one hundred, and I'm going to put start in chat, and the person person closest without going over will win. And I don't think Lizzie and I will sign ours. Those those are <laughs> <laughs> no, so recycling. <laughs> So I'm going to hit start, and if you would like the lovely Ninja Turtle from Eric, you can guess between 1 and 100. Oops, don't start yet. I have to actually write the number down. All right, I wrote it down. There you go. This is when we find all the lurking and workers, Eric. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Um, while we're doing that, the way I'm going to give away the Wee Wax and the B is you guys need to comment when this video is done in the comments and let us know um, what was your favorite part of tonight's interview. And I will then pull somebody... Um, I would say by Wednesday next week, I'll pull two winners and they will win this. And then we'll also do another giveaway tonight with numbers for the little wax holder. So that way some of our replay people have a chance to win as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop in five, four, three, two, one, stop. And the answer was 52. I think Karen got it dead on. Yeah. Karen, anyone else? All right. So Karen is a teacher. She's on spring break today. Karen did, whoops, sorry, Diamond Queen. Karen did 52. So I do have Karen's address. Karen, do I have permission to give it to Eric? I'll send it over. <laughs> I don't even get a picture. So, <laughs> so congratulations, Karen. You just give me the approval. That's the therapist in me. I always like her. It's okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. So real quick, Lizzie, do you want to write down a number real quick for my beehive? I'm going to be giving away. It doesn't have any Eric honey in it. I'm sorry. <laughs> You'll have to put your own wax. <laughs> what? Not what? Between what? Uh, let's do one in a hundred again. Okay, mm. wrote it down. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put start, and then as you're guessing, Eric, do you have any last? words before we say good night to you we're so glad you came tonight it's been fun uh no it's just been a, a pleasure to be here uh it was really nice to meet you both and uh, and your audience as well well i you know we appreciate we know it's been a long week for you and you just got done with a two-hour <laughs> twitch and now you're <laughs> entertaining us so thank you so much yeah not a problem thank you all right, we have plenty of people guessing. This is for the wax container. Lizzie, how are you going to give yours away while we're waiting? How do people, because you have I'm some going, other channel too. I'm just going to do um, a whip and chat. And um, I always ask a question and then people write it in the comment. And then I'm just going to pick three people out of the comments. So right. you have to watch and you have to comment or you don't win. And then yeah. if the same people always comment and the same people always answer the questions, there's the ones that are going to win all the prizes. And don't forget if you win, that's the thing. Nobody ever contacts us. So we have to pick I a know, different there's person. Two, so, there's two people online last week that have not contacted, have not, uh, contacted me because I have 
a form to fill out with all your information. They're not, they're not on my list. So I need to get a hold of them. They need to get a hold of me because I don't know how to get a hold of them. <laughs> well, so. I'm going to do stop in three, two, one. Lizzie, what was your number? I keep on forgetting the cameras over here. 39. 39. We have a 39. 39. I saw 36. Oh, we have a 36. Okay. Tima. Yep, I think she's That's the cool. closest. All right. So I do have your address, Tima. I'll send that out to you, okay? So we've got Karen and Tima. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming tonight. Thank you, Lizzie. Thank you, Eric. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. And um, ha enjoy your April Fools. You're almost done. Yep. <laughs> All right. Thank you to chat. I'll talk to you guys soon. Be blessed. Bye-bye.